I got shot actually on my hip and that hurt. I'm gonna try the hardest to make a living out of this. And then later on you find out that it's impossible. Yo, we're back with another walkie talkie. We what got, up, Mar guys? got Mariano here. Mariano, what's up? How you doing? Pretty good, chilling. It's yeah. a beautiful day out. No, no clouds, nothing. My name is Mariano. I like to shoot street. I like to shoot really anything that's, that's interesting. How long have you been in New York? I've been in New York for about, I would say maybe like nine years now. I had a, a little break for about a year and eight months. My girlfriend and I went back to Miami and then we came back seven years ago or something like that. I've been here ever since. It's a, it's a fun place, especially if you want to do street photography, it's, it's fun. And yeah, like little by little, you know, I was obsessed with street photography. Then I would go out every day shooting uh, for hours. I would go to work, right after work, I would just go straight for, I don't know, three, four hours. And that was all I did for a while. Around what year was this? 2014, 2015. I guess I've been around for a little bit. And now I'm starting to go back out again after COVID. I feel like I took a, I took a year and a half break from it just because, you know, the, the streets weren't the same. You didn't have the people, people were, were wearing masks. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy that the city is back to normal. It feels like it's had 90, 95, almost 100%, and it's, I'm so happy. And I'm happy to be back shooting also, yeah. You shoot all black and white, yeah? Yeah, I like shooting black and white. Um, color, I like color. I don't like shooting color for myself, but I, I enjoy it when other people shoot in color. But black and white, it's like, a, it's like what I first got into, and uh, but I've always been attracted to. I feel like you can, you know, play around with a lot with the shadows and, and create something. Um, but yeah, black and white mostly. How long ago did you make that switch or designation in your mind that you're like, that, that I'm, I like, I'm that only I... gonna shoot black and white? I don't know, I feel like from the very beginning I was like into black and white. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm like the student, I'm a student of like the 50s and 60s. And so I was so used to seeing books of uh, photographers that only shoot black, shot black and white. So that was what, what I was attracted to. You know, that's what, what I used to see as a kid in magazines or like, uh, you know, documentary work was always in black and white. Um, I know it's, it, it just has such an, uh, an appeal, such a personal uh, touch to it. But it doesn't matter if you shoot black and white or color. I've gone between color and, and, and black and white, you know, shooting, shooting color was fun for a little bit, but I feel like, I don't know, just black and white is just so, so much more attractive. When you shot film, was it all black and white? Yeah, when I shot film, it was mostly black and white. I, I, I have a, a badge that I've been slowly working on, but the majority of it is black and white. And a, I don't know, maybe 15 rolls out of whatever, how many rolls I have is in color. I had this like, I still have it, and I still do it with digital where like I, I accumulate work. I had a horrible habit of just like accumulating film and never seeing it for a long time. The bad thing about that is that if you do it for so long and you hoard things and you don't see it, by the time you see it, even if it's like six months to a year, you tend to evolve in that time. And then once you see the work, you'll probably go back, sit down and look at it and you're like, oh my God, like I, I'm not into what I shot, you know, six months ago or a year ago. So I, I would find myself doing that for a long time. And that's how I ended up accumulating just film for, for years. And, and it's just such a bad habit. I, I don't recommend it. One of the bad habits that I've been trying to get myself out of is shooting from the side. I catch myself shooting from the side quite a lot and, and sometimes I can be annoying. Um, so I've been pushing myself to be a little straight in their face, not close, but looking at them. Um, but it's difficult, you know, once you build habits, it's such a bad thing. For example, like that one, I maybe should have shot it straight on, but I shot it from the side. 
but maybe it's all about exactly where you're standing and and the time is moving quickly yeah so if you have any bad habits like just try really hard to break away from those habits and push yourself to like i said approach the subject from a different angle play around with it and talk to yourself as you're shooting just to break away from that and it it's all practice, it's all repetition. So as long as you're consistent and working on those things, you'll find yourself breaking away from those, from those terrible habits. How often are you thinking about like composition when, you, when you're out taking street photos? A whole lot. I, uh, when I first got into photography, I never thought about composition. Maybe for uh, particular pictures, I, it would cross my mind, but now that I'm older and I, I guess like have a better understanding of photography in a way, or like maybe it's what I learned from the people that I'm into or like the books that I'm into. Uh, composition, I feel like it's, it's very important and to be able to layer the photograph. Not every photograph has to be layered. Sometimes it's about, you know, a subject, one specific thing. So it, it, I feel like it all depends, but composition to me, it's uh, important for my photography. Is there a book, do you think, that has kind of influenced your style or the way you compose in a certain way? I feel like uh, Joseph Kudelka's or the invade what's the invasion 68 i think it's called or something like that uh that's what that's where a lot of my influence came from or like any war photographer any person that documented that was more of a documentarian than a street photographer i tend to learn from them more stanley green is another photographer that i really enjoy black passport but it's a book that it's it's so like it's so pricey but it's so and it and and, and in the book you have a lot of like personal work and you also have some of like some street photography that, that he took over the years along with stuff that he shot at in, in conflict um, and it's a mix of a lot of things. You take a lot of photos, you go to a lot of like photojournalistic type events, mm -hmm. like January 6th. Yeah. Like, I feel like you photographed the, uh, the protests and the riots a lot in 2020. Yeah. Stuff like that. Do you think studying all those war photographers and photojournalism type books kind of led you to that path? No, For so. your interest? So when I was a little kid, going back to that conversation where we're talking about like how I got into it or what, what got me into it, um, a good majority of the magazines and books that I used to pick up and look through were history books and, and you know, articles that talked about conflict and I don't know, certain like photographers that had gone overseas to document uh, war. And I feel like my interest for that type of photography or that type of work came from that. And so when 2020 happened, or like 2016, when Trump became president and people were going out and protesting, that was the time for me to experience and, and try it out for myself and see if I, if I were into it. And I love it. And on top of that, you're doing you know, important work. You're documenting um, a piece of history, something that we all are living through something that's important for society. So that's how I got into it. What are some of the other, like, other kind of conflicts you've been to? I know you went to, was it Colombia? Yeah, I went to Colombia in 2021, and that was pretty intense. That was very, very intense. What was going on there, uh, for people who don't know? So the taxes had been raised, and the working class was being affected by it very bad. And you gotta think about that people in Colombia don't make much money and the working class or like maybe live off of 80 bucks a month maybe 50 bucks a month so just imagine making 50 to 80 bucks a month and the, tri the taxes were being raised on you so people went out and protested that was that was intense that was something that I had never seen and police officers like the riot police do not care if you're press or anything so they're aiming at you they try to go for you they shoot at you with the pebbles. Uh, they don't have rubber bullets, they have glass bullets. So they, yeah, they hurt even more. I got shot actually um, on my hip and that hurt really, really bad. Shot on your hip? But yeah, the situation in Colombia was bad. Did you get into a lot of shit out there or being a photographer? There was, a, there was a, maybe a couple of times that some police officers tried to 
you know, they, they stopped me and they were like, oh, who are you with or what are you doing here? And I would just like take out the American passport and they would just like, they would leave me alone because if anything, if anything happened, I could just like contact you know, uh, the U.S. Embassy in, yeah. in Bogota. How do you how do you feel about photographing like events in New York City or I guess anywhere? Pride is a lot of fun. Pride is the one event that is fun to shoot, in my opinion, in my experience. If you can get inside any any of the fenced in uh, marches or parades or whatever, like you should go for it. You know, it's it's a learning experience. I feel like it, it makes you slow down a little and think about how you want to photograph it. I asked the event thing because... Oh, yeah. So, I've never shot on the first day. I know that the weekends are fun, but we'll see. We'll see what we come up with. What is this? People don't know. This is... What, San, San Gennaro? Yeah. yeah. Feast of San Gennaro. Yeah, the Feast of San Gennaro. Yeah, the Feast of San Gennaro. So, you have a lot of little stands so you can get delicious food. Um, very crowded. It's a little Italy, and it's a great place to come and, and visit if you if you're visiting New York City, or if you haven't shot this, like why not come? So you you recently started shooting flash again? Yeah, I was never into it. You know, like I just didn't like the fact that people sort of behave differently when you shot a picture of them with a flash. I had a few a few times where people try to get physical with me and that's like the one thing that I don't want photography to be about you know people getting pissed at you or you fucking up their day maybe getting punched in the face for for a, for a photograph so I never got into it per se never got fully into it but it's it's a lot of fun though so we never went over what gear you use what camera you're using what uh what's your camera of choice uh, my camera choice is the Leica 262 um, and I've had it since 20 late 2017 2018 so around the time that I started to run away from film I'm pretty worked in too like. yeah yeah so I know it's a it's a bit beat up I've I've dropped it a couple times but yeah all of this is my my doing Photography is a beautiful thing because, in my opinion, you're supposed to challenge yourself to do something that, something different so you don't get bored of it. So I've been, I've been doing this for about a week now and, and I've, I've been having a great time. It's a different perspective, challenging. I'm not really shooting people's faces. I'm maybe shooting, I don't know, steps or movement or maybe people's clothes like when they're walking or so a big crowd of people you shoot a picture you can see texture you can see different colors what are you looking for when there's like big crowds like this a lot of big crowds of like nothing happening if you walk by with the flash i'm looking for like i was saying something interesting something that calls my attention obviously without the flash there has to be that too but without the flash i feel like you can try to see what is happening in the environment and you can layer it you can find something to shoot so you can like fill the frame but with the flash like i i like i said i just got into it so i don't even i'm like still learning and playing around with it and seeing what i want to do with it what do you feel like people will say about your body of work when like 100 years from now you're no longer here oh my god i don't know the first thing we got to do is just like try to do something with it you know, right now I feel like I've accumulated a lot of work. A lot of work I, I haven't shown. The first thing we gotta do is like try to do maybe a zine, show your work, and hopefully people like it. But like always, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have people that don't like your work, people are gonna be opinionated, and, and that's okay, you know? Uh, people like different things. People always have something negative to say instead of accept, accepting the photographer's work or just the artist's work. And you gotta accept people's process and what they like shooting. And because they're not gonna be shooting that for, for the rest of their life. Photography evolves as you get older and you find, you know, you find different things attractive and then you tend to go towards that and, and you start pulling away from, from things I used to shoot. And that's, that's the beauty of, beauty of it. You know, for those photographers who are just starting, you know, you're gonna go through ups and downs. I still go through my ups and downs and, I, and I've been shooting for a few years and it's just a matter of finding ways 
to evolve, to accept it, to move forward, to try to try different things, and to not let yourself fall in this hole um, that that could potentially hold you tight and you know restrain you from from having fun you know this, the whole purpose of this is to have fun and, and obviously you we all take it serious we all want to do good work we all want to take good photographs but in the very beginning you're still trying to figure it out and as you get older you're still trying to figure it out I'm fi figuring something out something that I've never done before trying to keep positive and not think about the negatives and not being bummed out that you that you didn't take a single picture a single good picture that day or that week ignore that fuck it you know just keep going at it and keep trying to teach yourself to push yourself like push your limits my goals with photography i want to keep doing it for as long as i can and you know forever you think your goal has changed since pre-pandemic to, to what it is now like was your goal different yeah i think my goal is a little different my because of the, what I went through with, um, you know, the pandemic pushing me to slow down and, and think about images. Now I know exactly what I'm looking for. I go with an idea of what I, what I want to shoot a picture of. I go out for three hours, four hours, and I'm going out with a lot of energy. So instead of being out for six, seven, eight hours, it's not in me. I'm, like I said, I'm 33 years old, so I, don't, I physically, I cannot take it. And on top of that, I like to play soccer at 7 a.m. in the morning. So, you know, waking up at 6 and playing soccer for an hour is pretty intense. And then, you know, going out for six, eight hours is a lot. And going out for, for two, four hours, but going at it full force with a lot of energy, a lot of ambition, I save a lot of energy. And I'm in it fresh, with a fresh mind, fresh set of eyes, and I get to see the things that I want to I want to approach and I want to take a, make a photograph of. I feel like the break was very important, but the most important thing, which a lot of people, you know, forget about or don't want to, you know, pay pay any attention, is that this is to have fun. This is for you to explore, to go out, be outside, and experience life in a different way, in a way that a lot of people don't get to experience it. And then you're geeking, you're geeking out on the images that you're making, and you're, and you're like, oh my god, this is so fun, and then. You know, it, it just becomes this like snowball of like feelings and ideas and you want to keep going and you want to keep doing this, you want to keep doing that. And that's like the most important thing. It's all about the process and it's about you falling in love with, with this. It's about you enjoying it. Don't think about the reward or what could put potentially happen if you are successful or if you're killing it in the street. Like I said, having fun. That's like the most important part is the fun, you know, and evolving as you get older and, and accepting it, accepting where your photography, the direction that your photography is headed. It's not about, say, the clouds or whatever, like that, none of that matters. And we shouldn't be thinking about that because that, that was one of the things that I, when I took that year and a half break, I had to let go of because when I first went into it, I was like, this is what I want to go do. This is all I want to go do. And I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try the hardest to make a living out of this. And then later on, you find out that it's impossible. You know, it's, it's close to impossible. It's something that it's, for some, it's unreachable. And you gotta accept it and you gotta move on because having those thoughts and having that hunger can lead to something negative or having this like negative thought and ego. And then at the end, it's gonna kill you. It's gonna kill your creativity. It's gonna kill your drive. And then next thing you know, you stop doing it because you thought that it was supposed to reward you with something. And it's not, this is not rewarding you with anything, just with this. That's the fun part, that you get to think and you get to experience life. So funny, dude. Where else can you see a lizard on riding a dog? Just in New York City. It was your hands. 
It was it was the way he was holding your hands. I liked it. It was very, it was a very tender way. <laughs> Finish the sentence. I take photos because I take photos because it's fun. It gets me out of the house. I challenge myself or it challenges me and I don't know, you just learn. You're in this constant learning experience and evolving, and that is the fun part about it. And, and then on top of that, you get to meet great people. You get to have a great time, and then, you know, you have a community out in New York City. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, really. All right, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Mariano, thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you for tagging along and for listening to me rant about, I don't know, shit that you care, maybe you don't care, but thank you, seriously. Let the people know where they can show you some love. Um, you can find me on Instagram, on uh, Interview Pavement, um, Mariano Cayo, C-A-Y-O, and yeah, that's that's where you can uh, find me. All right, man, appreciate it. Thank you, appreciate it, Polly. Peace. Now when they see us in the streets, all they wanna do